What's up guys and welcome back to another video video which is going to be a little bit different because I realized I'd never spoken about this, about this. Uh, so I don't know exactly how we're going to go about it. I'm just basically going to tell you about the whole story about how I was effectively really, really close to getting the brand new Cayman GT4 when that came out and why it didn't happen and what my spec was and exactly how much that cost and what the finance options. I'm going to just read literally everything out to you, the residuals that I'd been offered, the monthly payments and why I ended up not going for it just purely because I came across this document recently and realized that I would have been taking delivery of my Cayman GT4 around about now, literally. I was meant to get it um, kind of June, July of 2020. So assuming there's a little bit of a delay with everything that happened with COVID, probably end of July, early August is when I would have gone in the car. So I wanted to share kind of the story Basically, I've always been a huge fan, huge Porsche fan, specifically the GT products of Porsche. And I loved the Cayman GT4 when it came out. I experienced it first with Shmi. And actually what's kind of cool is I've just driven one again. And that video is going to be out on Friday, me trying out the original Cayman GT4, testing it and kind of my reaction to that. I have not yet driven the new one, but when they announced the new one, I was super excited for it. Not only because it was, you know, it is, I'm sure it is. And I thought, you know, this is going to be a great car. It was manual. Um, it had the naturally aspirated engine and uh, I was really really excited about it and also because I try as much as I can be just purely because I, I can't afford to buy cars that are depreciating like crazy to be careful when buying a car especially you know a quite an expensive car like this it will be a car that will hold its value quite well and the last Cayman GT4s held their value quite well great car to drive and so I thought you know this kind of ticks all the boxes for me it was within budget of what I was looking for back then this was kind of last end of last summer um, it you know ticked the box of hopefully holding its value quite well and it was just a car that really excited me so I went into Porsche Geneva super lucky to actually have quite a good relationship with them there I met a guy called Thibaut at Porsche Geneva my mom and I surprised my dad with a Porsche Macan back in the day don't know if you remember that video they've now replaced that with a Panamera which was all through Porsche Geneva and so I met Thibaut through that whole operation and he's always been super super kind so when the Cayman GT4 came out called him and he was was incredible as always and I highly recommend if you guys go there go or are in Geneva and are looking for a Porsche to ask for Thibault at Porsche Geneva because he's always been so so kind and honestly one of the best customer services I've ever had and um, he managed to get me an allocation for one of these now it wasn't at all like you know he managed to slip away and get me an allocation I was you know in a waiting list and I was gonna have an allocation at the you know at when everyone who already had one got theirs therefore I was getting my car around about now which was you know quite a long time away at the time if felt like a year later um, but nevertheless we kind of agreed that we would move forward with it to a certain extent and we spec the car up and you know had kind of the whole order ready and that's what I've got in my hands now and I'm gonna run through with you guys so cover letter here I haven't seen this in ages so we're kind of gonna go through a trip down memory lane a Porsche comes with all the qualities you expect and value for short and long distances isn't that lovely so Porsche came in GT4 what's this first page Oof. okay we get straight into it with a large number so this gives you all the final pricing so 2020 car model year six-speed manual transmission with dual mass flywheel 420 horsepower and I had ordered mine in black with a black leather and Alcantara interior now the car we're gonna be talking in Swiss francs here which is a little less powerful than the euro and quite a bit less powerful than the pound um, now the car started at 127,200 Swiss francs which is probably, you're talking about 95,000 pounds, 90,000 um, pounds. And my end spec cost, this is taxes included, 150,100 Swiss francs. Now I actually got a deduction um, of 9,640 Swiss francs, which brought my final price to 141,000 Swiss francs. Once you've got the additional costs and charges, which were 540. You following? So basically the car was going to cost me 141 Swiss francs. It's written right there. So how do we get to that price? What was the spec and blah, de blah, de blah. Well then, I wanted to have on this car a simple resellable spec because I wanted to put quite a few miles on it. You'll see actually later in the finance documents, we'd planned on around 10,000 kilometers a year. So I wanted to drive it a fair amount, but I wanted it to be a simple, elegant spec, which uh, I could still kind of, you know, wrap over and I wasn't too limited with a crazy interior. So I could still kind of have fun with that. So black paint, I got a free paint color uh, because the Porsche, honestly, the 
Porsche black that comes standard is is really nice. Now, because it is a GT4, you get quite a few options kind of already included in the car. Then black leather interior seats in Alcantara uh, conjunction between the two. That's 2,140 Swiss francs. So that was quite a pricey option. It also comes with, so when you order a car in Switzerland, Switzerland there's the Porsche Swiss package, which uh, amounts to eight 1,330 Swiss francs. And that includes things like the Sport Chrono package, communication management, automatically dimming mirrors, cruise control, park assist in the rear with the reversing camera, two zone automatic climb control, digital radio, navigation, all this kind of stuff. So I, that you get naturally when you order the car through Porsche Geneva. That was a lovely thing to have. I then got the LEDs with the main headlights, including Porsche Dynamic Lighting System Plus, PDLS Plus. Basically, the lights look way cooler and they're so much more effective and if you're going to be driving the car a lot and um, especially on the highway where you get a lot of um, kind of bugs on the front of the light you want to have uh, the most powerful lights you possibly can so I decided to opt for those 830 Swiss francs for those Porsche are pretty pricey I mean the Porsche logo in satin black was 190 Swiss francs which is quite aggressive model designation afterwards so you once you've got the Porsche in black you need to put the Cayman GT4 in black which is 290 Swiss francs wheels painted in satin black 670 Swiss francs that's actually not too bad Light design package. I can't even remember what that is. 370. Club sport package, 4,780. That gives you the roll cage, the harness for the driver, and a bunch of other fun things. And that's actually, I think that's an essential one because it tightens up the car. If you're going to be driving on twisty roads, that does actually have a real effect on the character of the car, which it did on the original GT4, so I assumed it would on this one. And also makes the car a lot easier to sell afterwards. Uh, I then also got the six-point racing harness for the passenger seat because if you've got it on the driver's seat you might as well have it on the on the passenger seat as well. That was 510 Swiss francs. Steering wheel rim with top center marking in red. 290 Swiss francs. That's that little red thing on top of the steering wheel. That's fairly aggressive. Full bucket seats, the 918 style seats. 6,510 Swiss francs. Fully carbon. That's a big one. That's I think the most expensive option in here because I opted not to get ceramic brakes because I thought the black and red theme was cool and steel brakes come with red calipers at Porsche and or ceramic with yellow calipers so and I'm also I wasn't going to do that much track maybe every once in a while so I couldn't really justify the cost of the ceramics and also on track I, so often the feel of the steel ones is, is quite a lot nicer so couldn't justify the price of that didn't get those so the bucket seats are the most expensive smoking package 70 Swiss francs that's actually convenient I do not smoke I think like a lot of teenagers made the stupid decision of giving it a go for a little bit but I have no longer smoke but the reason I got the smoking package was actually because you get like a little ashtray um, and you can take the ashtray out and it's quite a good place to like put your keys and stuff in Porsches whereas if you don't get the smoking package it's just covered over and it's wasted space so it's actually kind of a good idea to get the smoking package even if you don't smoke because it gives you an extra little storage cubby hole. Uh, floor mats 130 why they don't come standard I have no idea. Fire extinguisher it's just kind of cool isn't it 190. Instrument dials and guards wet red 600 to go with the red theme. Sport Chrono stopwatch instrument dials guards red as well, 420. That seems a bit aggressive to be honest. Seat belts and guards red, 340. Stitching and contrasting color, 1,440. So that's basically all for the interior in red theme. Oh, and then sun visors in Alcantara, 500 Swiss francs. Probably could have done without that one. Interior carbon package, 820 Swiss francs, which I actually thought was, it's a lot of money, but it's not as much, you know, like when the stitching's 1,400 and then that's 820. It doesn't seem too, too bad. So that brings us to a grand total of 22,900 Swiss francs of options, which sounds like a huge amount, but at Porsche, everything is kind of an option. And um, I actually didn't even go too ballistic. There were a lot of things I did not tick as well, um, like the carbon ceramic brakes, which I like close to 10 grand, I think. So anyways, you've seen all the final prices. Now, I'd just like to say the deductions I had, so the price reduction of 9,640 was not due to like YouTube or anything like that. That is something that, you know, Porsche Geneva and Swiss dealers and you know, every dealer has the option of giving certain reductions because obviously they get the cars at a good price and that can end up bringing a reduction to the end client. So that is something that um, anyone can get as well. So I was paying complete normal price for, for the car. There wasn't any YouTuber friendly price, which I think a lot of people think we often get. Which, to be honest, does happen quite a bit, but usually not on new cars like this. Okay, so here's photos. I don't know if you guys have already seen the photos or not, but I think it looked really cool. Look, it was kind of a funky looking spec 
spec, all black with the red, and the interior is what really made it for me. And it kind of didn't shut any doors in terms of modifications I would want to do afterwards, and was a pretty particular spec. So I was really happy with it. Now, I was going to finance the car. So how does the finance work? So the final price, 141,000. We chose to do it on the duration of a 49 month finance with 10,000 kilometer a year limitation with uh, an interest rate of 3.9%. So I was going to put a first down payment. So the way it works is basically you put a first down payment and at the end of your 45, 49 months, Porsche guarantee a residual value of 60,000, which was the case here, Swift Franks on the car. So they think that in 49 months, the car will not be worth less than 60,000 Swiss francs. So effectively, the monthly payments are paying the difference between the 141,000 plus the interest rates from the 20,000 plus 60,000, so 80,000 you've already put down through the down payment and the residual value. So the down payment was 20,000, which I was going to put Swiss francs with monthly payments of 1,573 Swiss francs. So that's how much it costs to have a brand new Porsche Cayman GT4. 1,500 a month basically with 20,000 down payment. Swiss francs uh, with 10,000 a year over a 49 month finance on 3.9% interest. Voila, that is all the information on the car. I was this close to getting it. And in the end, what kind of drew me away from it was the fact that I thought they were gonna make too many. And I saw one and heard one. And whilst I love the car, I wasn't overwhelmed. And I thought the price was just a little bit too high. 140,000 Swiss francs, you know, that's over 100,000 pounds basically. It just didn't quite sit right with me. And, you know, I'd spoken to so many people who had gotten allocations. It didn't seem too hard to get allocations. So I figured they're making a lot of these cars. So I didn't see the, the residuals being too good. I didn't think it was going to hold too, too well. It's value and, you know, we have yet to see. The car would basically have been arriving now. So it would have been more relevant what the prices are in two years. So the, the jury's still out on whether it was a good decision or not, not to take the car. My gut feel was it's it's I'm gonna lose you know value on this car and at this price there's a lot of other interesting options so by adding you know not a huge huge amount more I ended up opting for the 430 Scuderia which I felt would hold its value better and gave me more of a raw experience and more of what I was looking for so there we go I thought I'd make this video because I'd never really spoken about this I was this close to ordering a Porsche Cayman GT4 and then ending up opting out of it uh, was it a good decision was it not let me know what you think the jury still out. I still don't really know. I mean, huge thanks to Porsche Geneva and to Tibor for kind of putting it all together for me. And I know that one day I will be buying a car through you, Tibor, and through Porsche Geneva, just when the time is right, when the car is right. And so huge thanks to you guys as well for watching this video. And I just thought, uh, you know, it's, it's, I prefer being completely open. And I think it's really interesting having all the numbers out there because at least you can now see exactly how much this kind of thing would cost. I, I haven't done it in the UK. So those are the Swiss prices, but you know, you can kind of calculate and do the conversions it's not too too complex so thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it subscribe if you aren't already and friday a video with the old generation came in gt4 which is quite funny so you'll see my reaction to driving that and yeah i kind of regretted not getting it after driving anyways long story i'll see you on friday thanks for watching guys cheers bye bye